Hi, welcome back to Linux. Okay, sorry about the little stutter there in the first one, the first video. This is the initial configuration, part two of three. This is the one where we actually look at the desktop of our Linux system, how to go in and configure that system to kind of meet your personal needs. And the settings that I, this once again, this is a personal system. You do it the way that you feel it should be done. But this is the way that I do it. And if you want to do it that way, then fantastic. So over here, I'm gonna walk through the date and time, desktop, hot corners, privacy, screensaver, windows, display, keyboard, power management, sound, and software sources. It sounds like a, kind of like a big list, but it, it's gonna be pretty intuitive once we get there. So once you have your desktop and you've converted over to traditional view, we go over here and click the Linux Mint icon and go up to the little gears there, those little sprockets that you see in that icon. That's the system settings, the control center. So we click that right there, and the first thing, rather, once you get started, if you want to change something, over to the side, there is a scroll bar. Some people think the scroll bar is too small. At 1080, well, actually, I guess I'm 1920 by 1080. At this resolution right now, this works fine for me. Um, but if you want to change that, that's in themes, and you go to settings, and you can change that right here. I'm not gonna dwell on that. It works fine for me, but if you do want to make that bar a little bit wider, then you can. Especially in the 4K mode, you may want to change that once you're over in 4K. This is a 4K monitor, but the uh, the video card, I this initial installation that I used, and for the video I play back, I did not have the video drivers installed, and so I needed to reduce the resolution to make it very responsive. I could now change that resolution back, and we'll look at that, but it's not something we have to do right now. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started with preferences. If you need accessibility options, then there are your accessibility options right here. You can go through and look at those settings and see if you need anything like that. And that is maybe something that um, you could use or if you wanted to uh, just one of those things that you just like that feature. Uh, moving on over, we're gonna cover not every option in here. Uh, in the class, I may do a full video and I'll go through each of these options, but right now I'm gonna look at the initial setup, the things that I do to set up my system. So date and time here, I'm gonna go ahead and choose America, New York. You can choose wherever you're at. <clears throat> and go ahead and set that system up. And I want to change this, display the date. If you look in the lower right-hand corner, we've got the date, date right there, but I mean the time, but it's not showing me the date. And I would really like it to show me the day and the date. And so if you choose display date right there, it does. And so now this shows me Wednesday, January 1st, 1504, which, hey, happy new year, it's 2020. Um, moving on, going on over to desktop. I like to have the trash icon on my desktop. So if I delete something, it shows up there in the trash and I can go through and empty the trash there. You can always add panel icons. So there, there are a thousand different ways to do this. Uh, but you can always do this a different way. This is uh, one of the things I'm gonna show you, the easy way to get it set up and get up and running. So let's look over at uh, Hot Corners, next one down. So I'm gonna skip extensions, skip general, and go to Hot Corners. Now I probably shouldn't skip general here because if you are using a monitor that's gonna require some, some different settings and you may need to go in there, but I'm gonna skip that for now. Hot corners, enable this corner. I am going to make the upper left-hand corner show all my workspaces, where I have four workspaces right now. On one of the workspaces, it's where I upload the YouTube videos and make my changes and settings. And so now when I enable this and I hit the upper left-hand corner, it shows all my workspaces there. So that way you can see all the workspaces I'm using. I really enjoy that feature. I use that a whole lot. If you ever want to lock your computer, you hit Control-Alt-L, and that will lock the system. Or if you want to open a terminal, Control-Alt-T. I don't want to skip those for you just in case you're saying, hey, we can do some other things with this. Yes, you can. You can do, uh, you can do different things with these. Um, but this is show all workspaces, and that's what I'm going to do, and that's just moving your mouse in the upper left-hand corner. Okay, moving on. We've got languages. If you need additional language options, please go through and install those language options. You'll also be... It'd also be a good idea to go down to the lower right-hand corner and use the Update Manager, which we mentioned last time, and the Update Manager go through and install language packs or other things that you might need. So, privacy, moving on down. 
never forget old files, you can turn that on, or you can remember files for a certain number of days. On this system, because this is a, a classroom lab computer, this is not my, my Linux uh, laptop, which I use in the other room, I've got this set on seven days. So that sounds fine to me. If you want to change that, you can. If you want to make it 30 days, you can make it 30 days, whatever you want to do. So that's fine right there. Um, connect, connectivity, you uh, over here, if you want to do that, you can. You can turn that off. If you don't want your computer to be noisy, you can just turn that thing off. And never forgetting old files, of course, removes all that and keeps it there. Or just saying, no, don't remember any files, you can choose that. So for this, privacy options, I'm going to go ahead and choose for 30 days, and that's fine for me. Now over here, screen saver is the next option. I'm going to disable the screen saver. So I'm going to say never and do not lock. So I do not want it to lock at all. So I'm going to turn that feature off. So when the screen saver enables, it will not lock the screen. I, I, it's an open classroom and the lab that I'm in right now, I encourage people to come in and use these systems and I don't want the screen locking for them. So I want them to be able to pop in. I've also got this set to auto log on, so it will automatically log the students in and they don't have to worry about typing passwords or anything to get in the system. It's about experiencing a freedom of the Linux system and the freedom of this open source software and, and getting through and being able to freely use the resources that they've been given. So, um, okay, screensaver, let's move on over to the, the next one here is kind of interesting. It's Windows and it's behavior. And I, I'll go ahead and open a couple of windows here to kind of show you what that, that looks like. So if I do text editor, no, I'm going to get that one open. Let's not do that one. If I do terminal, so I'll go terminal, terminal, terminal. I opened up terminal three times, but each time it overlapped the last time. That's kind of annoying. So what I want to do is I want to have my windows cascade themselves. And the way you do that is you go to the window settings, choose behavior. Inside of behavior, you change, instead of center, choose automatic which I don't know why automatic is not the default because it seems like automatic would be the default behavior. So we've got that set now. So if I open up a terminal and then I open another terminal and another terminal, now they cascade and I can get to the terminal above it or I can get to the other terminal and drag those things around without having to move every terminal to move it around. So, so or whatever app I'm opening. And uh, that may be because you know, hitting the terminal and the modern desktop will only show you the terminal that you have opened again, but there you go. All right, display, I'm gonna go ahead and look at the display here. So if you wanna change your display resolution, you can. So dropping down to hardware here, there is display and you can change your display resolution. If you have not installed your NVIDIA or whatever the drivers are for your system, then you may have a lot of options right here. When I start with the Nouveau, driver instead of the nvidia the pure nvidia driver then what you get is i mean i get maybe i don't know 30 something display resolutions once you install the driver the driver understands the hardware a little bit better and it's able to specify this is what you should be using so i'm, I'm going to go ahead and leave it at 1920 by 1080 and that gives me a really good picture and so i'm happy with that all right moving on down to keyboard i'm going to change the repeat speed because i like the repeat speed to be as fast as possible when i press a letter so i'm just going to increase that to fast if you want to make any other changes there you certainly can uh, moving on down power management i'm going to disable that because i do not want this system let's say never never turn off the screen when the power button's pressed ask is fine and the reason i'm doing that is because i control the de the desktops of these computers through a cron job I actually type X set and I tell it the display and I tell the displays to go off during a certain time of the day and on during a certain time of the day. That way I can turn the displays off manually, well, through a script and cron job, which is actually an Etsy cron tab. I do that every evening. So all, this, all the monitors go off at a certain time and then every morning they automatically come on and that's for, because this lab is used, it's got a bunch of glass windows around it. It's used as kind of a display lab and I wanna be able to control when the monitors are on, when people are coming by and so they can see the desktops of these monitors. All right, moving on over. If you wanna play with the sound or system info or printers or anything else there, go right ahead. But once again, in order to make this a little brief, we're gonna keep moving. Um, on the sound there, we have a lot of sound settings. The only one I'm going to look at is popping over and changing the maximum volume to amplified. And what this allows you to do is increase your volume past 100%. So if you're over and you're looking at your output, 
I can now drag this volume up to really, really loud. Be careful. If you do this, you may blow out your speakers. You've been warned. Okay, so there you go. There's the sound setting there. And then software sources, popping down here for software sources. And yes, the NVIDIA settings options there because I've already installed the NVIDIA driver. We discussed that in the first video. So on software sources, it's gonna say, hey, enter your password, and I'm gonna to try to enter the password here and log in. So in software sources, you just click on your source. It will go through and try to find the fastest one. And I'll say, yeah, yeah, choose that one, the fastest one. It'll go through and try to fix the fastest one for you again. And then you can choose, okay, it'll update the cache and your, your software will be all up to date. So nice thing right there, very convenient and that'll help you install software much faster in the future. So you want to go ahead and do your mirrors. You do not wanna wait 10 minutes for something that should take 10 seconds. So I have had mirrors on here that were taking, for this entire lab, it would take around 30 minutes to install something that should have taken literally 20 seconds. Um, and that is picking a really bad mirror. So. Be sure you choose mirrors, it will test it for you, it will show you which one's fastest, and pick that fast mirror. Okay, that is it for our initial setup there, so we're going to get this video off, and uh, this is part two. And part three, we're going to get into some bash settings, some text editor settings, and some other things I do on the desktop. So that if you'd like to set up your desktop like that, then feel free, go right ahead. Hope that this is helping out, and I look forward to talking to you again soon.